What's up, guys? It's me, Chris, here to talk about next weekend's double uh, bill on Showtime. We got uh, first off, we got the WBC 140-pound title fight between Junior Witter and Devin Alexander. I'm not really going to talk too much about that. Not that I don't know who the guys are. I am just haven't seen enough of their fights to accurately break it down too much. Um, Witter's obviously more experienced. You know, he's held the title in that division before. Devin Alexander, this is his first real big fight moving up. He's, you know, I've heard a lot of things about him. You know, he's, he's made a lot of noise vocally because Don King hasn't got him a lot of opportunities. He's, he doesn't have nearly the experience Witter has. Uh, it's a tough fight to call, to be honest. I, th I believe this title was vacated by somebody, whether it was Kendall Holt or Ricky Hatton, or someone vacated this title, though. That's why it is for a title. I know some people might be questioning why this is for a title in the first place, but um, that is the reasoning. Someone vacated it, and I believe these guys are mandatory contenders, so that's why they're fighting for it. Either way, I'm going to go with Devin Alexander by decision. Don't expect the most exciting fight because... One southpaw, one's orthodox, and to be honest, neither of these guys have the most exciting style, in my opinion, anyway. They're both kind of slick boxers. I think Witter has a speed and uh, power advantage, but he's been inconsistent in fights. I haven't seen enough Alexander to really judge how he his uh, his track record too well. But um, I don't know. I'm gonna go with Alexander by decision. But this fight could go either way. Moving on to the fight everyone's looking forward to: WBO 140 pound title at stake. Timothy Bradley defending his title against Nate Campbell. Timothy Bradley's record's 24-0, has 11 knockouts, stands 5'5", five five, has a 69-inch reach. He's 25 years old. Nate Campbell, the Galaxy Warrior, um, record 33 wins, 5 losses, 1 draw. 25 KO, stands in at 5'7", seven, 72-inch reach. He's 37 years old. So Nate's obviously got a slight height reach advantage. Bradley's a younger man, but I don't know if that's so much of an advantage. Um, some of these fighters nowadays... These older fighters are more well preserved in the past than in the past, like uh, Bernard Hopkins, great example, Glenn Johnson, just to name a couple. Juan Manuel Marquez, maybe, even though he's not that old. But um, so I don't know if age is really going to play a factor in this. Um, Timothy Bradley's coming off the decision, went over Kendall Holt. That was a good fight. I believe it was to unify two titles in that division. Um, and before that, Timothy Bradley beat um, Edna Cherry, and then he had the win over Junior Witter, where he won the title in the first place. Nate Campbell's coming off the majority decision win over Ali Ponica, where that's the fight where he lost all his titles on the scale. Close fight, and before that he had the split decision win over Juan Diaz. A fight that um, should have been a unanimous decision. Anyone that saw that fight, except for the judges, apparently, or at least one or two of them, knows that uh, Nate won that fight easily. Um, anyways, on to this fight. This is a close fight. I've said this in the past. If ever there's a close fight, though, this is one of them, you know. Make a case for either guy. Um, Campbell's obviously got a lot more experience. I believe he's got more power. Uh, as I said, he's got the height and reach advantage. He's faced a lot more different styles, he's faced more adversity in the ring than uh, Timothy has up to this point in his, their career. Uh, but Timothy is undefeated for a reason, you know. Very well conditioned fighter, doesn't have the most power. Um, not the fastest guy, but he just fights pretty smart. You know, fights pretty much stick to his game plan for the most part, very active in there. Throws a lot of punches. Um, just great condition, you know. Um, the guy's always in tremendous shape, which helps his stamina, you know, from the first round to the end. Um, in his last fight, he did get dropped by Kendall Holt in the first round and in the last the last round as well, but he really got hurt in that first round where he got knocked down by Kendall Holt. But um, being in such great condition that he is, he was able to recuperate and uh, pretty much control most of that fight, most of the rounds. Nate Campbell in the Panika fight came in overweight, wasn't in the best condition. Um, he pulled it out, although I thought it was a close fight. I don't remember if I gave it to Panik or not. I may have. But um, Nate got the win, and that you know he said he had trouble making the weight, so that's why he's moving up to this weight, Junior Watts weight, for the first time. And this is where he plans on campaigning at from now on. You know, I can make a case for either guy. Uh, Timothy Bradley, I think what he needs to do is kind of pressure Nate, get him against back against the ropes, kind of work combinations, especially work to the body. Um, I think if he works to Nate's body, he can probably uh, tire Nate out late. I think Timothy's going to be the more active fighter. He'll throw more punches. That's just his style. Um, I wouldn't advise trading and exchanging too much. Nate's got more power. I don't know who has the better chin, but Timothy Bradley doesn't have a lot of power. So I don't expect Nate Campbell to get really hurt or knocked out in this fight. Um, if anyone does get knocked out, it would be Timothy Bradley, although I don't really see that happening either. I do believe this fight will go to a decision regardless of who wins it. 
But um, I think Timothy you just you need to apply a smart game plan. Like I said, get him against the ropes. Work his body. Um, when it's in the middle of the ring, just move around. Don't stand in one spot for too long because you can't get caught. As for Nate Campbell, what he needs to do is try to keep the fight in the center of the ring. Use his jab, um, his reach advantage, land uh, one, two punches, you know, drop that power hand on him. Um, that right, you know, I think he could stun Timothy if he hurts him. He's going to need to jump all over him. Should be a close fight throughout, you know. I just think it's going to come down to who applies a more effective game plan and who fights smarter. Um, if it comes down to conditioning, he's definitely going to be in Timothy Bradley's advantage. You know, Nate shouldn't have as much trouble at this weight, stamina-wise, as he may, has had, may have had in the past. Not that that's been a big problem for him, but, you know, as I said before, Bradley always comes in great shape. But, um, I don't know, I just think Bradley's going to win this fight by being the more active fighter. Throwing more punches and landing more punches. Not necessarily the more clean and effective punches, um, because I do think Nate's got more pop to his punches. So I think what he does land will be more effective. But I just think as long as Timothy Bradley fights a smart fight in his fight, just moves around, you know, like I said, go to the body and the head, mix it up well. I think he should win the decision here just by being the more active fighter. Um, close fight, though, you know, either way, I do think it should be a really exciting fight. We've lucky, we've been fortunate enough to have both guys on the radio show, blogtalkradio.com slash leave it in the ring. I'll put a link in the information part of the bar. Um, we've had them both on separately and together where they were talking a little bit of trash. Nothing too disparaging. Both guys respect each other, which is something you like to see going into a fight. But, um, it was interesting, made for some interesting radio shows, so if you want to go back and check those out, um, you can download them or whatever. But um, I'm just looking forward to the fight. I think it should be a good fight. As opposed to the first fight, I don't think the first fight's uh, the winner. Alexander fight's a good stylistic matchup. I think this is. So it's going to be the uh, young line against the old line, so to speak, you know. Will the student get schooled or, you know, will the young up-and-comer, you know, teach the old man and show him, you know, it's time for uh, the new generation? We shall see. Either way, I expect a good fight, though. Probably be back next Sunday to get my thoughts afterwards, but until then, guys, um, I'm out of here.